where you're from. Yeah, David Worrell from Oxford University. All right. So, David, can you explain why snake bite is such a problem in the rural tropics? Well, it's a combination of um, an environment which often has a very high density of, of snakes, including venomous snakes, and uh, increasing numbers of people invading what you might call the snake's territory in the interests of agriculture of various sorts. So it's that interaction between um, snakes, many of them venomous, and a lot of people in rural areas, usually farming or herding or something like that. And how big a problem really is it? This has been one of the problems that uh, it's difficult to quantitate to say exactly how many, but we are at last getting some increasingly accurate figures. For example, in India, probably the worst country in the world for the total number of snake bites, we now have pretty good data suggesting that 45,000 people or more die of snake bite each year in India. And worldwide, I would say that 100,000 deaths a year and perhaps two to 300,000 people left with permanent injury as a result of snake bite, um, it would be a modest estimate. So with those sorts of numbers, even if they need clarification, why is snake bite so neglected? Well the problem is that the rural people who suffer so badly from snake bite really have the lowest political pro profile. They're poor country dwellers, farmers, nomads, cattle herders, or even uh, indigenous people in many parts of the world. And they don't just they don't have access to the politicians, the top administrators who can get things moving in the centres of power, the academic centres of these countries. Okay. Now, for somebody who's say sitting at home in the United States or in the UK, who has maybe a, an image that snake bite is one of these sorts of things where you get bitten and you, you die quite quickly, is that true? Or what's the real uh, story behind it? What really happens to a snake bite patient? Well, in many cases, of course, snakes bite people and the human victim gets away with it. Either it's a non-venomous snake or sometimes not a snake at all, mistaken for a snake, a lizard or something like that. But um, even if you're bitten by a venomous snake and the fangs puncture your skin, you still don't have anything like a 100% chance of having enough venom injected to do serious damage. This so-called dry bite rate is anything between... 10 and 90 percent, depending which type of snake bites you. So it's a proportion of people bitten by venomous snakes will receive enough venom uh, potentially to do harm. But the progress of events after that is not really according to the popular perception of almost instant death. In the case of the paralyzing snake venoms, the cobras, mambas, crates in Asia, uh, the sequence of events might kill the patient as soon as a few hours after the bite. But uh, more common worldwide, viper and adder bites have a much more slow progression towards a potentially fatal outcome. Uh, days or rarely even weeks, or people may die much later of the complications. So it's a slower process, and it's not by any means a certain risk if you're bitten by a snake, but the risk of serious or fatal damage is certainly there. And we've seen a lot of photographs of some really horrendous injuries caused by snake bite. How does that happen? This is partly delay after the bite. Most of the rural areas of the tropics where snake bite is so important are gripped with the traditional belief that the right treatment for snake bite is not in the distant western style hospital, but it's very close. It's in the village or even in the household, resorting to the trusted traditional healers witch doctors and so on, uh, who apply various herbs, but they sometimes do very harmful things as well. The um, intervention of the traditional healer may cause serious harm, but, but the least it causes is serious delay. When someone is bitten by a snake, they need to get to some sort of medical care as soon as possible so that they can be observed, and the appropriate interventions can be made uh, if and when they're appropriate. And with this resort to traditional healing it usually puts back the pro process of going to hospital, um, sometimes by a number of hours, but in many cases we've seen even by weeks. So a patient will finally arrive in hospital with a rotting limb, and the frustrating thing, from the point of view of a Western-style doctor, is if only we could have seen that person earlier, particularly within a few hours of the bite, 
uh, using anti-venom and other treatments, we might well have been able to save that limb. This is the frustration. So how many people do you think actually lose their limbs as a result of snake bite? Well, there have been some pretty wild estimates in the literature, and I've certainly altered my opinion over the years, but I think that, that a modest estimate, and of course it depends which part of the world you're in, by the way, in Australia, Oceania, the snakes there very rarely cause tissue damage. They don't create this risk of long-term physical disability from amputated and rotten limbs, dysfunctional limbs. But certainly in Africa and Asia, um, there are many species of venomous snake that, uh, whose venoms can kill tissue. And it's this irreversible loss of tissue that will leave people with, at the very least, uh, the loss of an important finger or toe, but at worst, loss of an entire limb. So um, the, the actual risk, I would say, probably two or three times the number of people who die of snake bite, I've already said, say, 100,000 a year worldwide, two or three times that number who survive, lucky enough to survive the bite, but they survive at the cost of very serious permanent physical disability of the sort that I, I've been describing. And what does the global community need to do to improve the treatment of snake bite to prevent these deaths and disabilities? The global community, first of all, has to start treating snake bite seriously. The subject of snake bite nearly always inspires laughter or derision in those fortunate Western countries that don't have um, a large venomous snake population and have excellent medical services throughout their, their regions. Um, so the most important thing is recognition. We've got to get people, in the same way that they've recognised now that malaria is a serious threat to children and adults in many tropical countries, they've got to realise that snake bite, in its own way, perhaps not killing as many people, certainly, but killing enough people and maiming a lot more. This is a responsibility of the global, global community and also the international funding agencies, both the personal charities like Gates and so on, also the international bodies that uh, dispense money and provide training and equipment uh, to combat disease. So snake bite, I've always said, is the most neglected of all the neglected tropical diseases. So it goes together with things like malaria, schistosomiasis, some of the viral infections uh, and uh, worm infections and other parasites. It's grouped with those as a neglected tropical disease because it is most common in tropical countries. But of all those diseases, snake bite is the most neglected. It has the worst reputation for being taken seriously. People would rather laugh about snake bite. They'd rather feel that traditional fear and say, oh no, a denial. This, this is something that doesn't happen, or at least it happens a long way away from me, so I don't have to be concerned about it. Hey, thanks. That should do it. Thanks.